welcome to the Andy Devo Guide to Orcs in Blood Bowl 2. This guide video will highlight some of the more effective starting rosters, show the best way to level and manage the team, consider stadium upgrades, pre-game inducements, offensive and defensive setups, and if that wasn't enough, there will be also some general tactics and pointers for the team in-game towards the end of the video. Orcs, or the Greenskins as they're commonly known, are com capable of incredible savagery and one of the most deadly and feared races in all of Blood Bowl. The tactics are simple. Go straight through your opponent and keep hitting everything until there's nothing left to hit. If there's enough time, you might even score a touchdown. Right, now I've introduced the video and given you a flavour of what Orcs are about, let's start by looking at their basic attributes, things you should be aware of when playing as or against Orcs. So in the strengths column, we've got high armour. They have got armour 9 across the board apart from the thrower. They've got high starting strength overall. They've got access to four strength four players and one strength five. Uh, and almost everyone else, apart from the goblin, has a strength of three, which is the average strength in Blood Bowl. They've got great skill access. They've got access to strength skills and general skills uh, on all positionals. And the thrower has access to the leader skill, which can make their rerolls a little bit cheaper. In the weaknesses column, um, they're not very mobile. Uh, the ball carrier only has a movement of five against an average of six. Uh, the strongest players are only movement four. Um, they have, uh, for a fighting team, no access to the claw skill, um, which, as you will come on to later, can be a bit of a drawback. And the line orcs, uh, the positional filler of the team, um, only have access to general skills. So, let's move on to the orc roster, looking at each player in turn and what I believe its role to be within the team. First up, we've got the troll. This is the orc's big guy, and they're only allowed to have one. If we look at the stat line, you can see they possess a very high starting strength stat, high armour, but low movement and low agility. This means that they want to stay put and fight, or ideally just get in the way. For skill access, things are a bit limited, uh, with only strength skills on normals. This is great for getting guard and stand firm. However, block is a core skill for fighting, and this now requires a double, which can be a bit of a problem. Trolls, like many big guys, start with a lot of skills. However, some of them are actually negative, with loner, really stupid, and all, always hungry, all affecting this guy badly in some way or other. On the positive side, however, trolls do have Mighty Blow and Regeneration, so on the days they do actually behave, they can actually fight quite effectively. Black Orcs. These guys are the rocks of the team, with four on offer. They possess a strength stat of four, which is above average, and these guys generally find punching the opposition pretty easy. They've got both strength and skill access at their disposal, so block, guard and Mighty Blow are available on normal skill rolls. This makes these guys very effective when leveled slightly. So they do have their drawbacks, however, with their agility of two and movement of four, it can be slow in getting off the ground via scoring touchdowns and they do not start with a block skill so getting casualties early on can be somewhat haphazard. On to the blitzers. If the Blackhawks were the Arox of the team, these guys are the engine room. Again, the roster is four at their disposal. With a stat line of movement six, strength three, agility three and armor nine and a starting skill of block, it means that these guys generally do the bulk of the blitzing and the go-to players when recovering a drop ball or be giving a handoff to run in a touchdown. They've both got the general and strength access on normal skill rolls, so they can take the same skills as Blackhawks. However, with block already assigned to them, they've got an effectively an extra skill slot to play with. Next up, we've got Line Orcs. These guys are a bit of a filler for the team, with no limit on the number taken other than the overall roster size of 16. They're also cheap at only 50k, and have for their price a great stat line of movement 5, strength 3, agility 3, and armor 9. They're ideal for taking hits that your positionals don't want to take, um, and with an armour of 9 they do it really well. They do sadly only have general access on normals, so developed line orcs without stat increases or doubles are not very effective. Onto the throwers. The orc roster has two throwers available to them, and they have a stat line of movement 5, strength 3, agility 3 and armour 8, and come with a pass and sure hand skills. They have passing and general access on normals, and they are a solid ball carrier for the cost, however I think the lack of speed does hurt them uh, in the long run. Lastly, we've got the goblins. What's Greenskin Army list would be complete without a goblin? These little guys can add some extra pace, if of course you're brave enough to field them, and in combination with the troll can provide an extra one turning threat um, that the rest of the team can struggle to offer. They have a start starting stat line of movement 6, strength 2, agility 3 and armor um, armor 7, but start with a dodge and stunty skills. This does mean they are amongst your fastest players, but with an armor value of 7 and also having the stunty attribute which gives them plus 1 to being casualtied, they don't generally survive too long. 
Overall, not a great idea to take too many, um, and most Orc teams tend to only feel maximum of one, if at all any. So now we've looked at all the different players that you make up an Orc team, let's have a go and look at some starting rosters so you can get yourself underway in whatever format of Blood Bowl you're going to be playing in. Uh, this is Orc starting roster number one, um, and in this roster we've gone for the maximum of positionals um, and only two rerolls. So we've got the Troll, um, four Black Orcs, four Blitzers, one Ball Carrier in the Thrower, uh, a Line Orc to make it up to 11. Uh, and then we've only got two team rerolls. Now this roster is very, very greedy. Um, it sacrifices uh, reviability in the form of rerolls uh, and potentially uh, an extra player. Uh, but what it does make up for is it's got all of your highest strength players on the field at once. Um, and you're also fielding the troll, which does have the mighty blow skill, uh, which is great in early doors for trying to remove players, uh, or just as a strength five lump, just go and park it against a couple of opponent players uh, and watch them flounder as they're unable to deal with it. All in all, um, not a bad roster, uh, and you'll regularly see this played uh, either in a league setting uh, or in champion ladder, uh, where it's perpetual uh, league, both of which uh, make great use of landing the uh, MVP skill uh, on any of the top nine players, where well, you're quite happy to get them off the ground early. Moving on, we'll look at uh, a second roster I've come up with. Um, this roster uh, removes the troll, and what you lose by removing the troll uh, is you do gain an extra reroll, which means that you have uh, a lot more reliability. You've also picked up, um, uh, or sorry, you've also removed the troll, which means that you've now lost the really stupid player, uh, and so the whole roster is now much more reliable uh, overall. Um, what it does show is it um, doesn't have a, uh, a thrower. Uh, so if you are one of those players that don't really like the throw and you want to turn a blitzer into a ball carrier, um, while it's not necessarily my advice, you can actually do it. Uh, and this is probably one of the most sort of uh, flexible rosters you've got out there. Um, and for those of you who want a little bit of reliability straight out the gate, uh, and also with 30k saved up, you should be able to pick up your path to carry after the first game. Uh, this roster is built to last um, with armor nine all the way across the board. Um, you shouldn't be expecting to take too many casualties. So let's go and look at the uh, third and final roster I've come up with. Um, this is Orc starting roster three. Um, again, very, very similar to the roster uh, you've just seen. In fact, it's only got one change to it, uh, which is that I've traded out a line Orc uh, and I've put in uh, a thrower. And the idea here is that um, I wouldn't be using one of the four blitzers to be carrying the ball. Uh, I'd use the thrower to carry the ball um, and then slowly later in the drive, if it's safe to do so, hand it off to one of the blitzers so they can then start getting up and uh, picking up valuable skills like block, uh, sorry, guard, tackle, mighty blow, piling on. Um, they, they then uh, can really get out the gate and the thrower is just basically a ball ca caddy. Um, it does make the apothecary a little bit longer to get to because you've only got 10k in the bank, um, but overall um, I, like, I like this roster quite a lot. Um, and if you don't want the troll, this is probably the best roster to go for uh, in my mind. So now we've built the roster and you've probably played a few games, uh, we need to work out what sort of skills do we want to take on these players so that we're building them in the right manner uh, and they then are effective on the pitch. Um, we'll go through the positionals one at a time. So starting with a troll, uh, the most common first pick skill is guard um, because a strength five guard lump is very effective. Um, if you get a double skill, then you've got a lot to choose from, but probably the primary uh, skill is block. After that, tackle, pro, dodge, um, all very effective skills after that, but block as his primary um, job is hitting stuff or not being hit and knocked over. Block really does synergize and do that remarkably well. Um, after normal skills, guard being the absolute premier pick. After that, stand firm is pretty strong. Grab's not terrible. Um, you could, if you're really crazy, you want to take piling on because it's already got mighty blow, but I wouldn't advise it. Um, but overall, you're probably looking for guard, uh, stand firm, and possibly grab at 31 points. Uh, if you haven't leveled him up uh, with a double skill at that point, uh, I'd look to recycle. Next, uh, the Black Orcs. Um, I would always take all four, as we've just discussed, but um, first skill on all Black Orcs for me is block, because again, their primary job is hitting things. Um, after that, I'd look at guard. Um, you could also consider taking mighty blow in there, so block and mighty blow. Um, I would adv advise against taking mighty blow as a first skill uh, because then they're re re remarkably unreliable. Um, however, I think block, then guard, then mighty blow across all four is very effective. 
uh, and then potentially stand for uh, for the blitzers. Um, again, I've gone guard. And there's a very strong common theme going through this already, uh, but effectively we want uh, some support, support players which are blitzers, take three guards, uh, and then you want one enforcer type player um, and mighty blow then tackle, or if you're feeling incredibly greedy, mighty blow and then piling on uh, effectively is the first two skills. But either of those, that's how I take the blitzer pack. Um, generally speaking, you want one, potentially two killers, but I'd, I'd start off with just the one enforcer, killer turret brute, uh, and then potentially build into it after you've got guard uh, on the first skill on the others. Uh, next we've got the thrower. Um, first skill, block. Um, so again, if you don't start with block, your first skill is normally block. If you do start with block, you your next skill is guard, um, unless you're performing a specialist role. So in that mould, a uh, orc thrower will take block first. Um, after that, you've got a couple of very strong choices. You can take kick over return, which is what this thrower has got here. And that allows you to move three squares for free on the first turn um, after the ball has been kicked. That effectively turns it into a movement eight player um, and means that you can then get the ball safe and secure, which is the turn, uh, turn one primary goal. Um, you could also consider taking um, accurate. So if you want to pass the ball, uh, he's already got the pass skill. And with accurate, it means that the first three squares that you're going to throw in um, would mean that the pass is a two plus pass with an Eaton inbuilt uh, team skill reroll, which means that um, it synergizes incredibly nice if you have to pick up a plus agility blitzer, for example. So uh, accurate solid. Um, other than that, tackle at a pinch. I think those three skills probably win out for me, um, or, or leader again at a pinch, but um, not until a little bit later down the development track. Uh, the Linox here, I haven't actually developed them uh, because this is a bit of a representation of maybe what a, a TV 1500 team might look like if you're able to develop them um, along the right route. So you're not really looking to skill up the Linox, but if you do skill up, um, block, wrestle, dirty player are probably the three skills that you'll pick. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having a dirty player because the objective of Orcs is either uh, always just to fight and try and you know, remove remove players. So a dirty player plays into that quite nicely. Um, you do need to be careful because Orcs don't play very well um, when they're down players, so um, don't get sent off. So consider that one carefully, but you know, block, wrestle, um, definitely good skill picks. Um, notice I didn't talk about the kick skill, which is a general um, utility type skill that you will see on some players. And the reason I've not gone for kick uh, on the line orcs is because typically uh, during setup, which we will come to uh, later in the video, um, you will be putting the line orcs on the line of scrimmage, um, or you know, orcs don't really make great use of kick skill because they're not very fast and they're not very flexible, so they can't, they can't you know, get around the sides of the enemy. Um, so kicking it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll now go and look at um, a, a bit more of a developed orc team. Um, so this is taking it all the way up to, uh, to 2260 team value, um, and this is the tail end of where you might see an orc team. Um, and in this one, uh, we've gone uh, a troll, which has got block, guard, and stand firm. Um, we've gone block, guard, and mighty blow on all the blitz uh, on the black orcs. Um, and I'm just demonstrating here that uh, at 51 points, uh, stand firm is typically the skill once you've taken the holy trinity of block, guard and mighty blow. Um, stand firm's great, but also if you get a double skill, um, don't look past dodge. Uh, it's a great skill for defense uh, and it allows you know, a lot of players strength for block, dodge pieces, pieces are very difficult to knock over uh, or move around and it also synergizes incredibly well with stand firm. So if you can get a double on any of these, that's a great skill pick. Um, you could also take diving tackle, so if you're in a very elf um, meta for whatever reason if you're playing in a private league diamond tackle is a brilliant skill because uh, it means that they've got to roll a four plus typically to get away uh, fives if it's an agility three player so they're really good at pinning your opponent down and that's really what orcs want to do they want to pin them down and punch them in the face uh, for the blitzers i've demonstrated here what you can do if you get some stat increases so um, this is a movement seven strength four agility four blitzer um, it obviously would be nice if you get one of those players like that um, but if you smatter the star player points around, you might get one of those stat increases, and I would take all of them. Uh, the only stat increase I wouldn't take on any orc at all is armor, um, but as one of the orc's uh, key weaknesses, movement, taking a blitzer with plus move really does help negate that uh, particular challenge. Again, um, already starts with block, so next skill is guard, followed by mighty blow, because whatever we hit, we need to make sure it stays hit. 
Uh, and then here, all the blitzers have taken tackle, so that gives us a lot of flexibility when playing against dodge heavy teams. Um, four tackle means there's probably a tackle player somewhere uh, on the vicinity to do stuff. And I've built them into four slightly different ways. So we've got the, uh, the stat boost freak player, who you never know what you're going to get out of him. You've got the general enforcer, but with uh, a bit of utility and he's got stand firm built in there. Uh, we've got the out and out killer, which has got um, mighty blow, piling on, tackle and frenzy. So the idea here is that he does all of the blitzing and whenever he's hitting, he's going to get two dice, hopefully maybe three because of all the guard that's knocking around. Uh, and then another two or three dice uh, as a secondary follow-up. So you're really maximizing the chances of rolling uh, a stumbles or a pow to make sure you can get whatever you're hitting on the floor, jump on it, pile on, um, and you should always be focusing on turning around actually doing that and piling on to maximize uh, the removal chance. In here, I'd normally take a secondary killer. Don't normally put frenzy on this one. Uh, the idea is that if you can just stand him next to a player uh, at the start, at the end of your last turn, then maybe he gets a free bonus hit um, and he gets to pile on so you're generating again more equity uh, and trying to build up more value uh, over the course of a few turns. Uh, here we talked about the thrower and in fact as I've just said you've got block, we've got kickoff return, we've got accurate, we've got leader um, so um, pretty solid thrower, all very effective uh, and then for line orcs you've got a block and if you do get a double skill I think guard is great if you don't get a double skill then you know, wrestle if you really have to take a second skill, then it's Fend, but at that point I'd be considering replacing them. Uh, and again, um, Line Orc uh, is just dead player. You'll notice here the absence of a Goblin, and that is because, generally speaking, the uh, statistical probability of scoring a, a, a one-turner uh, with a Troll and a Goblin is less than 10%. Um, and I don't personally deem that as viable enough to, to warrant having a, a 40k player on the team who might be completely useless. So. That's a personal preference. Uh, I'm not saying it's wrong or right, it's just my personal preference and I don't tend to, to use them, so I'm not including them in this guide. Uh, I hope that's useful. Um, we'll move on now on to the next section. Right, let's look at inducements and stadium upgrades. So, inducements for orcs generally revolve around one question. Who is more likely to hurt who? Um, if we can hurt them, then taking bribes and a dirty player line orc, if you don't already have one, uh, is usually the way to go. If, however, they will hurt us, and taking an extra apothecary uh, is a wise move as it allows us to apothecary badly hurt players and uh, return them to us for the next drive or if we don't stand much of a chance it just allows us to keep our safe team safe while we grow them uh, and get ready to fight another day either way around always consider uh, bloodwiser babes as they are effective and doubly so in any form of overtime format uh, keeping a full 11 players on the pitch at all times uh, is key to keeping team shape uh, and winning the fighty war um, Wizards for Orcs uh, are of limited value and don't generally result in a defensive score, so I wouldn't rate them behind either. I would rate them behind either uh, apothecaries or babes, uh, but their use situationally um, can be good. So just be aware that you've got them uh, and they're a tool in your arsenal, rather than outright dismissing them or having them as the first pick. Uh, finally, Orcs do have uh, access to some good, uh, if not slightly expensive, star players, which we're going to look at now. Um, the two standout picks for me. Um, are uh, Ripper, who is a strength 6 troll, uh, who also doesn't have really stupid, um, and he's got grab as well, um, and then we've also got uh, Varag Gorgua, who is a orc blitzer, who's got mighty blow uh, and jump up in addition to normal skills, uh, along with thick skull, um, and he also comes with a much prized strength 4 statistic, uh, so he can punch stuff all on his own. Um, always however remember that star players can't have an apothecary uh, assigned to them, so uh, if they're injured, they're effectively dead. Um, therefore, always consider your opponent's team um, before committing to star player. If you've got the million to take it out, then probably a star player is uh, not the way to go. Uh, now, while I've recorded a separate in-depth look at stadiums, um, see below link for that. Um, Orcs generally take a lot out either the bribe stadium, uh, which is the referee rest area, uh, or uh, the anti-riot, which is where you lose a turn at the end of the half, um, which is the security gate, uh, as they enhance the strength of the team's strengths, uh, or mitigate one of the biggest risks to um, Orcs, which is um, that a, a one-turn uh, touchdown uh, then can become a two-turn touchdown. So overall, um, I think they're the two top picks for me. Um, an honourable mention probably goes to Throw a Rock, as the, the anti-Throw a Rock stadium, uh, as you don't want one of your players removing. Uh, so again, in this section you can see a thread that's running throughout it, which is keep 11 players, 
make sure you can win your fighty war, uh, and that really should hopefully uh, thread through the whole video. All right, let's look at the defensive setups. So while I think defensive and offensive setups are each worthy of their own video, I will now show you some of the most common setups I can use for orcs. In this setup we've got on screen, uh, which I've mostly used for bash coaches, I'm looking to own the centre of the field and not give away any easy blitzes on my players. If you look at this, uh, all of the players that are going to get hit here um, would require him to base me with at least one of his players before uh, he can throw a two dice block on any player that's not on the line of scrimmage. Um, the things that I would look to change on this, uh, depending on my opponent, are uh, maybe add the, most, the least valuable players to the line of scrimmage if they're able to knock over whatever I put there. Um, I could also hide my two best players. Um, the thrower should actually be one square slightly to the right here um, and swap the thrower and the line orc, which are the back two players, with my two most valuable players, hiding them from being blitzed. Um, this is good for a, a half of half setup, um, but it's not very good at stopping quick scores. So don't use this uh, if the turn timer is sort of beyond turn five uh, and either half. Okay, so here what we've got is two different versions of a wide zone defense. On the left hand side, um, we've got a connected defense to the line of scrimmage. So we are vulnerable to a quick snap slightly. However, uh, you'll notice that all the players on the left hand side of the um, wide zone are actually connected to the line of scrimmage uh, and make it a little bit more difficult to knock that line of scrimmage over if you have, haven't got the strength necessary. Uh, I've also put a strength four player in the wide zone on the far left. So breaking down that flank is quite challenging. Um, this is great if the team that you're facing are all strength three and maybe you don't have any guard. Um, would be a little bit less effective uh, if they have got a way of breaking through that black orc uh, or hit a perfect defense. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got another variant of um, the wide zone defense. This is a chevron. Um, this is great for hiding a couple of players. So the player that's got agility four uh, and tackle, which is this guy in the back here, uh, would be hidden. And you'd also get a mirror image on this side for this player, whoever you put in that square. Um, the pluses here are that if they do get past you, you've got less distance to cover because you're further back and um, you can protect a couple of players, whereas in the other side, you don't get to really protect anyone. Um, the downside, of course, though, is that you have rather left the line of scrimmage out uh, to get punched um, and it is very vulnerable. So swings and random outs, you need to decide what your actual goal is here. Do you want to stop them getting past or um, do you want to try and connect up and defend all your team? Overall, they've all got a place. You just need to decide what the actual objective is before you start putting your pieces down. So now we're gonna quickly look at offensive setups. Um, and offensive setups are actually a really difficult one for coaches to work out what to do. And the reason for that is because you can't write a guide specifically for every single eventuality. Bear in mind your opponent has just put all their players on the field and it depends on what race you're playing against, what turn it is, and also, uh, what race you're playing as. So in this scenario, we're just gonna go over and look at some general truisms and then you can apply those to your own gameplay. So um, first of all, what do you need to achieve? Well, we need to make sure that the first thing we do is we knock over all of the line of scrimmage. Um, and ideally we wanna make sure that if we get any pushes, we can get uh, follow on hits with the players uh, and those play blocks are safe. So if your opponent's put three players on the line of scrimmage, you're gonna want three or four or five players, probably four or five, uh, lined up against them and so you can block diagonally. Um, so go away and work out how you're going to throw uh, diagonal blocks and also what happens if you roll a push. That's the first bit. So that, that takes care of this guy here. Next thing, um, what happens if your opponent rolls a blitz? So in this particular scenario, I'm playing against Skaven um, and I've actually gone very aggressive. Um, but what I have tried to do is if he gets a blitz, he can't easily dodge all these players through uh, based on the classic boat formation he's got here. Because they've got a strength four player in the wide zone. They've got a strength four player trying to pin the middle of the field together. Um, and it's very difficult for him to get through these guys here. Um, so that's quite effective. It's also on the same on, on the other side. We've got a strength four player on the other wide zone. So if he gets a blitz, he can't get through. Then the third and final point of your offensive setup uh, is that you need to think about ball safety. Um, and ideally, actually, ball safety goes first. However, you need to try and weigh all these things up all at the same time. So wherever the ball goes... Um, the Orc Thrower needs to be able to go and collect it and by the end of your turn all your players either need to be providing this wall scenario which is what I've gone for in this setup or you've gone and caged up uh, and made the ball completely bulletproof safe. So in this scenario I'm fine with, with a deep kick because he's not going to get past me because of my wall um, and if it's a shallow kick then I'll run the thrower towards it uh, and I will be able to take these players 
and then I will be able to screen off the ball and make sure that I'm safe because the goal at the end of turn one is always make sure the ball is completely safe. Hello everyone, I just wanted to pop on at the end and say thank you very much for watching. Um, anything you enjoyed in the video or if you think this video is missing anything at all, uh, please leave it in the comment section below. Uh, as always, leave a like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel, lets other people find it. Uh, and finally, if you want to come and talk to us live, then we're available on Twitch every Tuesday evening from 7pm UK time. And then on the uh, weekends, on Saturday and Sunday, both from about 4pm uh, UK time. Uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Thanks folks.